Hello everyone, Josh Caswell here with another installment of Digital Creativity at Home. This time we'll be talking about a program that we've actually featured before, but I'm going to tell you about a specific application of it. As you can see from my screen, it's Blender, and that's available from Blender.org. And Blender is a 3D modeling program at heart, but it's since grown to do a lot of different things. But we're just going to focus in on the 3D modeling aspect of it, and I'm going to show you how to do a model that you can use to 3D print. So you can do something in Tinkercad, but Blender is so much more powerful and it can do a lot more. Of course, that means it's a little bit more complex. Um, one of the key things that keeps people away from using Blender are all the options and features and, you know, I mean, look at this UI here. We have menus, uh, different tabs, and I promise you that each of these tabs have a hundred million things buried under them, and each of those things have um, sub-menus of their own. There are also confusing uh, tabs up here that you can click on, and if you get in one of these things, you're like, what am I looking at? <laughs> but if you know the basics and you know what you're trying to do, it's re it really is something that you can grow from and um, you can make a really cool result from it. So what I'm gonna do today is start in the, a general file, and that's kind of, as it says, a file to do you know, a few different things uh, from this starting point, but this also works as a great place to start with 3D modeling. So I'm gonna click that, and now you see this first thing here. So this is the, what's called the default scene, and in this default scene, you have three things. You have a cube, you also have a camera, and you have a light. And the light and the camera are really for 3D rendering, or if you're doing animation, uh, you know, or VFX or something like that in here, you might need to use the camera or the light. We're not gonna do either of those things, so we need to get rid of these items. And I'm gonna hit a key to do that, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna enable an option in my Blender menu here. You don't need to worry about this. It's just gonna show you the keys that I press in this bottom left-hand corner to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So whenever I click this on, I hit the N key, it's N as in Nancy, to hide this menu. And now you can see this press down here. So any button I press, so N, you can see it. Press N again, you can see that it's been pressed. If I click, you can see that it's clicked. Um, so if you need to know what key that I'm using, uh, if I don't say it expressly, take a look in this bottom left corner here. So I'm gonna click and select this camera here. You can also box select different items. So if I clicked in here and got all three of these items, I can box select them by just left clicking and dragging a box. A third way that you can uh, select them is select them in this upper right hand corner here in the scene selection. So I can hit this to select the cube, this to select the light, and get those. You can also hit the A key, and the A key is kind of like hitting Control A to select all. So I'm gonna hit A, and you'll see that I have all three things selected here. But we really only want to worry about these, uh, or this camera and this light, because we don't need them in our scene, so we can get rid of them. So I'm gonna click this camera, and I'm gonna show you the first key to, that we'll learn to help you do stuff and that's the X key. X is to delete something, and you'll see that it pops up here. It should have popped up in the lower left-hand corner there, and I'm just gonna hit delete. You can also right-click the item, and there's a delete button in there, and you can right-click it in this scene collection, and you can delete it here. So that's kind of the story with Blender. There are multiple ways to do the same thing. So some of these uh, you know, ideas of having menus and sub-menus isn't so bad because a lot of them are accessible through shortcuts and I definitely recommend learning shortcuts so you don't have to dig around and try to find things. Uh, so I'm going to select this light here and get rid of that, hit the X key, and it, now we just have this cube here. So there's some things that you need to know before we get started and the first of these is to uh, select this. Once we have it selected, we might think, well, what if I want to move around this cube? You might think, well, I can click and drag it, right? No, uh, click and drag is box select. 
So if you have an item selected, you can actually hit the G key. And if I hit the G key, then I can move it around. G stands for grab in Blender. So you can move things around and you can place them wherever. If you don't like where you place them, you can undo Control Z or Command Z, depending on your system, and it undoes it. Another option that you have whenever grabbing is to right click before you click down to set it. So if I right click, it snaps back into place. That's a good way to undo something that you're not quite sure that you want to commit to. So you can undo it and you don't have to worry about it. And you can also have, or you also have the option of hitting Control Z. Another key that you might need to know is R for rotate. So rotate, as you may expect, kind of rotates the item around. And I'm not gonna go through with rotate. Um, but you can move things around that might be useful. And then another thing is scale, and that's the S key. And if you hit the S key and just pull your mouse out, I'm not even clicking down anything, you'll see that it gets bigger or smaller. So there's another thing that you need to know about this. I know I'm throwing ideas out pretty fast here, but this one is very helpful. Um, let's say that you wanna make your item bigger or smaller, right? You can scale, but you can also limit how you scale. So right here we have length, width, and height. So we have an X axis, a Y axis, and then a Z axis. And you can see those are reflected over here. So we have length, width, and height. And if I want to make something uh, longer or wider, I can hit the scale button, which is S, and then let's say I just want to move it in the X axis. Whether that's length or width, it doesn't matter, but I can make it you know, longer in that direction. So now, after I've hit S, and I've not hit anything else, I can hit X. It's only gonna let me move it on the X axis. So I can move it to where it's a little bit longer here, and I can scale it you know, as much as I want on that X axis. I can also scale on the Y axis, so let's make it a little bit thinner, and then similarly, I can scale on the Z axis and make it a little bit taller. And so now I can pan around holding down my middle click button and see that I've made this rectangle here. I can also zoom in with the uh, scroll wheel and scroll out with the scroll wheel here. And you can see that I've created something here. So that's how easy it is to manipulate things. And you can also do that with grab or rotate as well. So if you wanna just grab on the x-axis, you can make it grab on the x-axis, you can make it grab only on the y-axis, and you can make it grab on the z-axis. These are all very useful things to know. Um, so I am going to kind of line this up right here. And what I'm gonna do is go into a different view here um, because that'll help show you something else. And that is uh, the edit menu. So right here you can manipulate the object, but the edit menu gives you a whole lot more options. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit edit menu. It's right here, edit mode. And you can see my object here. So when the object selected, everything's selected here. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that these menu items changed over here, and some of the things changed over here, but don't worry about those. Um, those are important, but we don't need to worry about it because it just it, it gets way too complex. So by default, whenever you have your item in edit mode, it's important to know that it is set into vertex mode. And because of that, you are able to select individual vertexes or vertices and you can see them. So you see this white dot here, that's a vertice. If I click this white dot, or this black dot, you can see that it's selected here, and that's a vertice. And if I wanted to box select both of them, I have both vertices selected. And vertices are just a fancy way of saying corners or just points where lines are broken. Um, but you can actually uh, move these or manipulate them in this vertice mode. So I'm gonna get this one, and I only have that one selected. Now if I hit the G key, I could pull this out. Let's pull it out a little bit. And you can see it's changed the way my object looks. So I'm going to control Z to undo that and show you the other modes here too. So we have a line mode and like this has corners, this also has lines. So this is a line here and if I click and drag I can get this line 
and it's kind of small there. So let me actually select a bigger line. And I have this one selected. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better. And I can do the same thing. I can grab and pull out this line. So now I have this kind of triangular prism type thing. And I'm gonna un undo that. And the final thing is face mode. So face mode, you can grab and move entire faces. That's like moving a side of this object. So you can see how you can manipulate these things. And if you want to have more precise control of the areas you're manipulating, you can split this object up. So how you do that is you have the object here, and let me just hit the A button to select all the sides, because in this mode, if you try to select something, it's only going to select the thing that's facing you. So if I click this, I'm only getting one face. I don't have any other part of the rectangle selected. So I'm going to click A to get all of it. And now what I'm going to do is hit the button Control R or Command R. And you'll see if you move your mouse left or right, this uh, kind of yellow line appear. And if you go up or down, you can see this yellow line appear. And this is called a loop cut. So Control R is a loop cut. And I'm just going to place it in the default area. And I'm just going to set it in the default area by clicking off of it. And now I have another line in here. And I have more faces and I have more vertices. So now, if I only wanted to move, let's say I wanted to only move this face, I could click this. And if I grabbed it, I'm, I'm moving this in half. I'm only moving the left half of this object. So now, you know, this kind of looks like an air duct or something, right? If I 3D printed this, I could have this, you know, air duct looking thing. Now, there's another button that you can press and uh, it, it can give you like a kind of a neat uh, effect and that's inset. And inset is the I button. So I'm gonna click I, having the face selected and don't wanna go in too far because it kind of like glitches out. But if we go in just a little bit, you can see that it creates another face in the middle of the object here. And what's cool about that is we could grab that and move this out, but we can also grab each of these little corner faces and move them out. So you can manipulate each of those, and that brings us to the next thing. So again, I know I'm moving fast, but you know, knowing all these things and um, being able to use them all makes your skill and ability like so much greater in this program. So what I'm gonna do is select this middle face here. And what I'm gonna do is click the last button that I'm gonna show you, I think it's the last button. Let's say, let's say uh, another button that we're gonna show you here. So I can click the E button to extrude. And extrusion is a fancy way of saying, I want to grow it and make it go out. So I can go extrude inward and make a little uh, pit in the object, or I can extrude outward. So I'm gonna show you outward, and I'm gonna click in the middle wheel to scroll around. And maybe this kind of looks like a, a robot foot or an inhaler, right? And let me undo that, and let me extrude in. So I'm gonna hit I again or E again, go inward, just a little bit here. And you know what? Let's go in a little bit further. I'm gonna hit E button again, and you can see this kind of made this pit in this object. So let me look at this from the top. Oops, wrong top. <laughs> Let's, that was the bottom. You can see that I've accidentally made a hole in it um, down here, but more importantly, I've made this little, uh, this little divot in here. So if I was wanting to make a, some sort of tray model or something like that, I could export this, and then I would have this you know, uh, kind of triangular type shape with a little square hole in it. And, you know, it's really, um, really cool, like how fast you can, you can make something that looks strange and, or just cool. So I can hit E to extrude. I could hit I to inset some things. I could hit E to extrude that. Um, I could have this face and I could rotate it. And you can see it's getting curved here. I could um, take this, whatever this is here, grab it and pull it out. 
and now I'm getting even this, you know, even weirder shape. Um, and it looks like I've kind of broken this side of it. But I can try to 3D print this, and you know, it might be like some sort of uh, some sort of art here. I mean, at worst, it's definitely um, abstract art. And you can do each of those things, uh, limiting them on the on whichever uh, whichever direction that you want to go. So if you want to go in the length width, width or height direction. So if I wanted to extrude this and I wanted to extrude it only on the x-axis, I can make it go that way. And it's way over there. If I wanted to extrude this only on the y-axis, again, I can extrude it out here. And now we're getting really weird shapes here. Um, and then you can go to File and Export, and there's an STL format. That's a standard 3D printing format. Uh, that's what you want to export to. And once you're finished making your masterpiece, much like mine, um, you can export it. Now, I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to delete it here. And um, I'm going to select the vertices to delete everything here. And I'm going to show you um, how to add some objects, too. So you don't have to build everything yourself from the ground up. Blender has some meshes here that it can provide you. So if you want to go to, um, actually, I need to be in object mode for this. And I'm going to click A to add a mesh. And there are planes. So this is a uh, flat square, length width, but no height. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I can hit Shift A to add meshes as well. And I can re add the cube. So here's my cube. And I can also add, they have meshes here, like this monkey. So I'm going to grab this monkey, and uh, it's upside down here. Or maybe I'm upside down. I think I'm upside down. Um, but if I add this in here, now I have this monkey head. And you can do each of these uh, different manipulations to any object. So if I wanted to um, poke around and, and modify this monkey head, Actually, let me get rid of this square here. It's going to make it a little bit easier, I think. And then I'm going to grab the monkey head and move it kind of closer to the middle here. Now I can get each of its little parts going back into edit mode. And I can push, pull, or delete you know, each of their things. So I can extrude this. I could uh, inset this, right? Then I could extrude that. And I could delete this face. So I'm going to delete the face here. And now I have this hole here <laughs> in the monkey's head. Um, you know, and I can grab it. I can rotate it. I can do lots of different things. So take a look at this program. Um, look at the tutorials. There's lots of information online. And really make a, three, a cool 3D object for us and share it with us. And bring it in for us to print. Uh, I mean, I'd love to see your creations. And don't forget that you need to export it to an STL format. Uh, that's not saying that, you're, that the model you make will be perfect, but this is definitely a great tool to build something very cool and nice. So with that said, uh, we'll see you in the next one.